gentlemen, this is take three of video one for Pascal programming. So we are going to look at variables. We're going to look at how to use variables in a Pascal program. And we're going to look at the basic functions of how to lay out a Pascal program as well. So the first thing we need to do is open our Pascal program. Uh, you will have saved it. Uh, should have saved to the same place I have, the C drive Pascal folder. Uh, and we are going to open a new program. Now I'm going to follow the same instructions and the same notes that I have given you. So we are going to be using these Pascal programming notes. Doesn't matter whether you have these on paper or if you have downloaded these from Google Classroom, they're all the same notes. So this is what we're going to follow. And we're going to follow the instructions as they are there uh, to explain how Pascal program works. Now, a Pascal program, uh, first and foremost, the first thing you have to do with a piece of Pascal programming is you have to give it a name. And we do this by using the program keyword in Pascal. Now, Pascal technically doesn't need uh, capitals or lowercase for its command words. If I write program there in lowercase, it still works. But I want you to get into the habit of writing all your commands, keywords, those sorts of things in all caps. The reason for this is that's what you'll be expected to do in pseudocode. So when you come to your pseudocode, you will be expected to write your program things in all caps. So we're going to write a program here. In this program, we're going to learn about how to use the read and write functions to interact with the user. So this program is going to be called using read. At the end of every line, at the end of every command line of commands, we put a semicolon in Pascal to show that that is the end of our statement. Now, unlike most programming languages, and in fact, in contradiction to quite a few, Pascal, when we save a file, cannot use the same file name as the program name. So here we have using read as our program name. If I'm gonna to go to file, save as here. I'm going to save this as I showed you before into our exercises folder. You'll notice that I've already got one there. It's called using read, but there is no space between it. There is no underscore. That is what we are going to call our program. And I'm just gonna overwrite this because why not? Um, and this is what our program is going to be worth. So it cannot be the same as what is in our program as our program's name it has to be different. But again, it has to have no spaces and no spaces in the file name tree. The next thing we're going to do in our Pascal program is we're going to ask it to bring in from the Windows environment some information. We're going to be using the interactive uh, uh, parts of Pascal here. So we're going to be bringing in information from the user uh, through the command line. So we're going to use CRT. That means that it's going to reference the command line interface and it's going to bring information in from that. So when we call this program, when we actually activate this program, we're going to be running this program in the command line. So that's why we have to bring this user CRT in. And that's a line that you will use in pretty much every program that you write. It's not a it's not a um, it's a line unique to the Pascal environment. Now, the next thing we need to do for our programs, and this is how Pascal works, is we define our variables at the top of our program. So as we start our program, the first thing we do is redefine our variables. And we are going to use, so we use the VAR um, command. We're going to define where the variables are, but we don't use our next line. Instead, we just go to the next line. And I like to give some, this is where we start some spacing. Now we have to use some white spaces to space things out. As I showed you with the pseudo code before, it's good for where we can actually see things, but it also helps us to follow the program through when we're error checking. So here, I'm going to hit the space bar five times. That gives me a nice little gap where I can see where things are. Now, Pascal uses the same five defined uh, variable types that we have seen before. It uses characters and strings, and it treats strings as character arrays, arrays we will talk about later. It uses Booleans, which are yeses and nos, and it uses integers and reals. Real in integer is treated an integer is treated as a whole number, a single whole number. The number five is an integer, whereas a real is what we call a float in other languages. A real is a decimal number. It's a part of a number. When we, now this becomes important as Pascal is very strict on its, on its variable types. There's no flexibility in them. So we're going to build a little program here, as you will have read in your notes, uh, that will accept two numbers from the user and then does something with them. So we need two variables of type integer. How do we put them in? We're going to call them number one and number two. So here we've typed in number one 
And rather than typing the now, what we can do is we can put a colon here and type integer and a semicolon at the end. So this means that number one has been defined as a type integer. And our next line, we can have number two defined as a type integer. But that kind of extends out the program a little bit. We don't want to do that. We want to try and make things as smooth as we possibly can. So what we can do here is after our number one, we can put a comma and a space. So we can call number one and number two of type integer. That there defines our variables. So our variables are now clearly defined for the user. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to put a new line and I'm going to come back a bit so that I can go uh, I can leave a little bit of white space. Again, spacing is important for our program. Now is where we're going to actually do our programming code. And our programming code in this way, we need to begin and end. We're actually starting and stopping our code in a particular thing. So Pascal requires us to tell it where the programming is by beginning. <clears throat> and below that, we will have an end. And our end has to have a full stop. There has to be a completed point at our end one two three four five and now we can start typing our commands so what commands are we going to use well we're going to get some data from the keyboard and we're going to write that data to the screen there are two little functions and they're called functions that we're going to use here one is called read and read line and the other is called write and write line. I say there are two functions. They each have two names, but they do basically the same thing with some small differences. The read function will read characters in that the user gives it until there is a space character, until there is a separation. The read line will keep reading until we hit the new line button. What's the new line button? Well, the new line button is a button that is uh, a a character that is included in all types of programming language, usually it is displayed as slash n. So when you are typing something, if you, for example, want to type some Java and you say, I want to speak over two lines slash n and have it look good, this here <clears throat> will be treated in the Java programming language as if you press the enter button but we don't need to care about the Java programming language. We're caring about Pascal. So what we can do is in our Word document, we can see what this new line character looks like. I can type a line of text, and then by pressing this button here, which you will have seen from time to time in your paragraph thing, I can actually show you that there is a new line character waiting at the end of this line. And every time I press enter, a new new line character is made. The way that Microsoft Word actually uses is it treats that new line character at the end of a line, even at the bottom of a line, so that that way it can be easily saved into other programming languages. But as you can see here, I can highlight that new line character. So with our read character, it will read just something that's in our line. Our read line character will read everything in our line up to and including that new line character, and then it will truncate it. It will drop it off. It will lose it. So, and our write and write line works roughly the same way. Our write will write information to the computer until I tell it not to. And it will write, a write line will write everything, including this new line character. So let's head over to our Pascal here and let's start writing. So let's write line. And I want you to have these in all caps because uh, uh, these are commands we're giving to our program. So we're going to write line. And this is a function, so I need to give it some information. I need to tell it to do something. So we tell it to do something by using round brackets, and at the end of our line, we have to have a semicolon. It's not a bad habit to get into of writing your round brackets like this with your semicolon at the end and then going back into them to actually do something. That's not a problem. Some languages actually, uh, or some IDEs, I should say, actually define it that way, but for the sake of the argument, we will do it this way. Now... I'm only going to output some text to the user here, and text to the user in Pascal goes in single, whoops, single inverted commas. So in between our single inverted commas, I'm going to write that I want the user to enter two numbers separated by a space, and then press enter. <clears throat> now, 
if I was to write, if I was to run this program right now and we can compile it just to prove that it's all safe and working, and we've shown you the compiler before, it's, if I was to run it, and in fact I will, I want you to watch this point down here on the screen. Watch it very, very, very carefully. Watch beside this, this thing very, very carefully as I run it and flash. All it did was write a single line of text to the screen and closed. That's it. Because we haven't told it to wait for the user to enter anything, it's just written a single line of text to the screen and then shut. So instead, we have to add a read line. And we will not put any commands there so that that way it will wait for us to press enter before it will write anything. It will um, um, save anything before it will close the program, excuse me. So if we compile and run this, you can see that we are, have been asked to enter two numbers by a space and then press enter. So as soon as I press enter, the program closes. Now, my version of Pascal is somehow playing up, and it means that it opens all my programs twice. I don't know why. It just seems to be doing that. So we're going to leave it as it is. So we've asked the user to enter two numbers. What are we going to have them do? Well, we're going to, the user is going to enter two numbers. So again, if I run this, we're going to expect the user to enter the numbers 12 and 59. So we need to read these numbers 12 and 59 back into the program. How do we do that? We're going to use a read and a read line. In our read, we're going to use some brackets and we're going to have to put it into a certain spot. We're going to have number one go into number one. So we're going to read the information, the first thing that the user puts into, into the number one memory location. And our second one, obviously, is going to go into number two. Now the user is going to have two pieces of information that's going to be read into the program. But at the moment, we're not doing anything with them. So for right now, we're not actually doing anything with these. So let's give them back to the user. Let's show them back to the user and see how this works. First thing we're going to do, and I talked to you a little bit about this last year, uh, is we're going to simply write a line of blank space for the user to be able to see because we want to keep our user interface nice and clean. We want to keep things nice and smooth. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm actually going to put a space in there, is we're going to write uh, just a space of line. Then we're going to write line. And we're going to give the user back their numbers. So we open our brackets, inverted comma. Your first number is space. Now, this is where we need to be careful about our white spacing. I need to put a space in here before I close off these inverted commas, or else when I display my variable, it's not going to have a space to it. To use a second piece of information, or to pass a second piece of information to our function, we put in the comma, the same as we did uh, above where we are defining our integers, space, and then we're going to say number one. So we are going to return number one to the user. Your first number is, and then whatever they put in first. And we will do this again for the second. I should have had a space there. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my own formatting. So there we have both numbers being returned to the user. Let's give it a try. We'll run this. I don't remember what I said before, but let's say 25 and 59. And your first number is 25, your second number is 59, exactly as we expected. And again, as I said before, my program likes to open twice. So I'll just control C and close that. If yours uh, is doing the same thing in Microsoft Windows, you can press Control and C, and Control C will actually close a program. That's a little tidbit for when using those things. So this is how we will get our information. And you can see I've got I've got this already written up for you. So that is how we will get our information from the user. And I've read, already explained the differences between these two to you. Now, because we have two two numbers in here, we can start doing some arithmetic. So we can start working on some Pascal arithmetic. For example, we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division in uh, Pascal quite easily. So let's actually do that. Let's, let's make our numbers work for us. Let's make our numbers do what we want them to do. 
So here I've just redefined, as you saw me type there, a few more um, um, variables, and I will just make this nice and simple. So we're going to copy these out and put them down on a new line each. And we are going to define our variables, our new variables, as being these things from our two numbers that the user puts in. So addition, as you have it here in our Pascal arithmetic, our addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, brackets, they work roughly the same way as they would in any other programming language. Division is a little bit different, which we will show you in a second. So uh, our Pascal also, you have to remember, follows our bod mass operations, brackets of multiply, divide, etc. Right. So our bod mass is followed strictly in Pascal the same as anything else. So for our addition, we can define the value of our addition uh, integer by using the defining uh, dot points. So we can use a semicolon and an equal sign to give it the value. We have assigned it already the type integer. Now we're going to assign it the value using our equal sign. And we're going to have our addition be number one plus number two. Very, very simple, very, very easily done. Now I'm going to copy this so that I don't have to retype it five times. Um, our subtraction will be roughly the same. It will be number one minus number two. And I've got too much white space there, so I will just delete one white space. Our multiplication, again, will be number one times number two. These are the same as we have written up here in our Pascal um, things. But division is a little bit different. Now, division can be done using a back, using a... Uh, a backslash, but it cannot easily be done on integers. Because we are using whole numbers here and we don't know what this number is, if we were to do this, <coughs> divide by number two, it will throw an error. So let's compile that and you can see here, this is an error. It's because we are extending the type of integer beyond what it can possibly handle. And because the chances are there's a high likelihood that when we divide one number by another, it will not have a result as an integer. So what can we do instead? Well, as my notes here have, we have a different function. We can use the div function. So we can actually have one number divided by another and get an integer result without any remainder. Or we could use the mod to get a remainder and only the remainder. And these are what these other functions are for. So you can play around with these functions as well in your own time to work um, these particular exercises as you want to. So in here, rather than using our divide uh, character there, we type div. And you'll notice that it comes up blue because it is a command. So I'm going to put it in capitals, div. Now, if we compile that, you can see that it compiles properly because we have now set this to be whatever number one is divided by number two without any remainder. So it will be an integer result. I haven't returned these to the user. So let's write some lines because detention is fun. Write line. Uh, addition. Subtraction. Multiplication. And division. So let's see how this compiles and it's all good. So let's run this program and see how we end up. So enter two numbers separated by space. Let's start with some larger numbers, 751, two and 23. Our first number is 752, good. Our second number is 23, good. Uh, oh, yes, of course, because it's 
my program likes to run twice, doesn't it? So what was that? 752 and 23. 752 and 23. Addition is 775. That looks right to me. Subtraction. That looks roughly right to me. Multiplication. Okay. And division is 32. So that will be, should have a remainder on it. But that is how we effectively write our information out. So that is our first Pascal program. Uh, whoops. And as you see here in the notes, I have some exercises for you here to actually use uh, uh, these uh, different bits to work answers through. So you'll be able to work some of these answers, uh, some of these uh, programs through using these exercises and using this Pascal. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I need to say on that. So that is our first uh, uh, read and write, and this will get us started. Now, I have already posted a couple of other exercises up for you to get started on, to get working on. So you have a couple of simpler ones there. Uh, I will come back to you for our next video, which will be about selections, if statements, and select statements. Uh, that's about where I'll end this video. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.